What you just spoke about there, words being violence, uh, we saw in New Zealand and uh, oh. violence was uh, was an act of love, but the, act, uh, but the words that the women's rights speakers wanted to speak were, was described as violence and sadly much of the mainstream media in New Zealand uh, pushed that narrative very heavily indeed uh, and we saw those shocking scenes uh, Kelly J. Keen um, attacked um, we saw footage of her being assaulted and uh, the trans activists who poured that tomato soup or sauce whatever it was on Kelly had this disturbing message in the aftermath have a listen Uh, so yeah, basically I mean, saying there that she wanted Kelly J. Keane to be full of blood. Uh, your reaction to what we saw in Auckland, please. I, I mean, it's so shocking, but it's a, a carry on of what I just said, which is, you know, if you really be, uh, if you get away with calling people, you know, far right bigots and Nazis and fascists and you, dehumanizing them, as uh, was done about uh, uh, what, who we know as Posey Parker, uh, then what you do is that you legitimise violence, don't you? Because let's be honest, if I thought there was mm. a bunch of real Nazi fascists in town, then that would make me think, mm. God, we've got to go and stop them. So they're whipping this up about everyone and anyone. And that's why I think this promiscuous use of the delegitimizing way that people are called these terrible names completely unfairly um, is going to lead to scenes as we saw in New Zealand. But the, the, the bigger shock, OK, so these people are fanatics. The, the, the trans ideology lobby are prepared to go to war lengths. But you would expect that responsible politicians and the mainstream media mm. would report this responsibly and tell us the actual reality of what happened, which was a woman was beaten up or attacked surrounded by, intimidated by hundreds of men. Violence against mm. women in that way is something that the liberal media usually are very upset about. So why will they not now name it for what it is, violence against women, for having opinions about sex-based uh, biological rights for women? Uh, it really was just appalling scenes, and it wasn't just Kelly J. Keane being uh, assaulted. There's footage of elderly women being yeah. repeatedly punched in the head, another one being abused mercilessly. It's just so much hate, violence, bile in the name of tolerance and inclusion. Um, and we've now got really high-profile advocates coming out and commenting on this, including J.K. Rowling. She tweeted, um, women have become used to lies, threats of violence and outright denial of reality. But if you imagine anyone feels defeated, think again, your men's rights activists showed the world exactly who they are. Now, as I mentioned, uh, the bulk of the media, both here in Australia and New Zealand, was appallingly biased. You would think some of the news copy was written by the trans activists themselves. Uh, but it's been different in the UK. The reaction has been far more measured, including from politicians. Here's Home Office Minister Chris Philp. I think the way that women's rights have been uh, threatened by uh, the trans movement is deeply concerning to me. I'm very concerned about the law that was proposed, obviously, in Scotland that the UK government uh, took action against. And I think what happened in New Zealand um, was, was terrible. I think that that lady had every right uh, to express her views. Claire, uh, sitting here in Australia, it's good to hear that because uh, in the city I, I'm in, Melbourne, in the state of Victoria, the Liberal Party here has just thrown one of its MPs out. She's suspended for nine months because she attended the women's Let Women Speak rally in Melbourne that Kelly J. Keane was um, holding and she spoke of that and she's been punished for it. So it, you seem to be in the UK a little bit more advanced in this debate and there seems to be a little bit more awareness 
of the excesses of the trans activist movement? Well, I'd like to be able to boast that, but it's just not true. It was also mm. exciting for me to hear that um, a member of parliament saying that because actually it was a rarity. Only today, the new leader of the Scottish Nationalist Party was elected. And in fact, he backed the gender recognition uh, bill, which gives uh, self ID. He's called anyone who criticised that bill transphobic. So that's, you know, the leader of the Scottish Parliament. Um, we have mm. had a, a, almost a silence across the political parties here. But where I do think the UK is a, a ahead of the game, if you want, and something which I'm uh, pleased to be part of, is there has been a much more open debate. Even It's really just pushed through gender-critical feminists, uh, people who are liberals, people who believe in free speech, even if they're you know not mm. sure about the gender question itself, have spoken out. So at least civil society and organisations like my own, the Academy of Ideas, have created a space in which it's now become acceptable to say these things. But we are demonised for doing so. so. That's why you've invited me on the show, because just because I made mm. a comment on Twitter, I was disinvited by a university and called a bigot and called a hate monger. So it's not all plain sailing here. But I, I've been shocked no, of course. by what I've seen in New Zealand and Australia. I, at the New Zealand examples yeah. and the fact that you have not had people condemning them is actually shameful for the country. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and uh, in Victoria, we've got those the legislation that Scotland's uh, putting in place. We've got that, I would argue, on steroids. We've got self-ID. We've got right. a rapist uh, uh, with male anatomy in Melbourne's biggest women's prison. We've got uh, all sorts of things that have already gone into legislation here. And sadly, both sides of, of politics support it 100 percent so it is a it is a bizarre situation where you've got both left and right pretty much doing yeah. as the uh, trans activists act, ask them to do uh claire fox i could speak to you all day i hope to speak to you again thank you so much for joining me today thank you.